Hello, welcome to this uh, new Rhino Nest webinar. My name is Rafael de Molino from TDM Solutions. I'm the product manager of Rhino Nest. With us today will be Xavier Rofes. He takes care about the marketing of the TDM products. And this is the agenda for, for today. We start talking about who we are, overview and main features about Rhino Nest, how to create, uh, how to create a nesting. This is a really interesting point. We will talk uh, really deep about what are the parameters that we must to use to create a good nesting. Uh, group Containet and Group Unify. Okay, we want to work with groups or blocks. A slice 3D, remapping, list objects, how we can uh, identify the objects, okay? I think it's really, really important when we have uh, more than 1,000 objects. I think it's important to have a good tool to identify these objects. Um, tabs, how we can create tabs, import, export files, raster to vector, Rhino Nest within Grasshopper, tools for developers, and where to buy on rhinoness.com. Okay, just a few lines about TDM Solutions. It's a company who provides solutions for several industries, automotive, architecture, jewelry, footwear. Okay, I think we have a small delay between my voice and, and, and the pages. Okay, uh, also we have other uh, application for Rhino, we have Rhino Gold for jewelry design, Rhino Mold for mold design, Rhino Nest, obviously, and uh, Rhino Shoe for footwear. Our company was founded in 2001, and our headquarters are in, in Barcelona, in Spain. Nowadays, we are over uh, 25 countries with more than 80 resellers. Okay, uh, before to start, uh, I would like to ask you about where are you located, okay? Uh, now you will see in your screen a question. Where are you located? You can choose Europe, North America, Latin America, Asian Pacific or Africa. We select and we click on submit. Great, we are about 90% botted. Okay, click the option and click the button. Okay. Great. This is the result. Forty percent from Europe. 48% from North America, 8% from Latin America, Asia, 3%. Okay, we know uh, uh, this time is not the best time for Asia. And Africa, 3%. Okay, great. Then, uh, overview about Rhino Nest. I don't understand why today we have a small delay between uh, my voice and the pages. Okay, overview. Rhino Nest is a nesting software for Rhino. Okay, we understand uh, nesting as an optimization and orientation of objects to save material. Okay, the main objective of Rhino Nest uh, is optimize and save okay, uh, material. Rhino Nest allow to uh, optimize the position and the orientation for cutting materials in different sectors. Okay, uh, architectural, sculpture, furniture, metalworks, shoemakers, sculptures, marine. Okay, and the best thing is Rhino Nest is fully integrated in Rhino. Okay, then we don't need to convert. Okay, it's all the tools are available inside Rhino.
about the main functionalities of, of Rhino Nest. Obviously, we have the optimization of any time of geometry. Okay, and we have some options. Today, we will know all of them. Uh, also, we have other additional tools as 3D slice to laminate 3D objects, uh, remapping to remap geometry in flat to do the nesting, advanced identification, we can add tags, okay, we can add tags, we can add uh, simple stroke tags for CNC machines. Also, we have panel management. We can control our sheets and the stock. And, okay, we will see today all of that. We can import and export HPGL files and, and ISGB. Okay, we can raster to vector images. It's integrated in Grasshopper. Okay, and, and includes uh, libraries for developers. Okay, if you are using RhinoScript or Grasshopper or Python, you can. Uh, Add your own functionalities and use all the functionalities of Rhino Nest uh, in your uh, plugins, okay? And, and and runs with uh, Rhino 4 and Rhino 5 in 32 and 64 bits native, okay? At this time uh, today we will see 2.5, okay? In the website uh, we have published the last official version 2.1, okay? But I think in in a couple of days we will have 2.5 beta to to test it, okay? Other interesting thing before uh, go to the next. Uh, remember, you have a, a chat area in in in, in Go to Meeting that you can ask your questions, okay? And Chavi will uh, uh, take care about that, okay? Okay, we think that RhinoNest is a user-friendly interface. Okay, uh, is RhinoNest was developed for Rhino. It's not other tool that we adapt to Rhino. It's developed for Rhino, and we try to 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 follow exactly the same philosophy uh, as other Rhino commands. Okay, all the tools are available from the Mino, the toolbar, the command line. Okay. Well, now we start to talk about how we can create a nesting. Uh, now I need to talk about a lot of things, and I will try to explain us in the better way that I can, okay, because there are a lot of parameters, but we have time. Any question, ask to Chavi, we we'll stop, we we'll repeat, okay? Uh, the objective of the webinar is understand how it works, okay? Then, basically, to, to do a nesting, uh, we need three things, okay? The first thing is what we want to do the nesting. What, what, what are the objects that we want to nest, okay? The second is where we want to place these objects, the sheet, okay? And the third is uh, the nesting parameters, okay? How we want to place these objects inside our sheet, okay? I think it's really easy to understand. If not, please write to Chavi. Okay. Object sheet nesting parameters. Now I will show you how to create a nesting, a very simple nesting, and later we will talk about all the options that we have. Okay. I don't know, Charlie. Somebody uh, ask about the quality of the song. Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, because here is showing uh, a problem. I think <laughs> we are too much people connected to the server. Okay. Uh, let me show you how to create a nesting, a very simple nesting. Great, we have Rhino, I think that you know it. Uh, let me open a very simple nesting. OK, 
Okay. Well, when we install Rhino S, we have all the tools here. Okay. And also we have the toolbar. Okay, here in the toolbar we have the additional tools. Okay, then now we want to do a nesting. Great, we click on nesting button. The first thing that we must do is select the objects that we want to nest. We want to nest these objects. We have the option to define more copies. Okay, here we have the option of quantity. We can click on it and type five. I want five copies, okay, of these objects. Okay. Now in the nesting window, we have selected objects five, total of objects 25. Okay. We have five copies of each object. Next, unique sheet or user stock. In this sample, we will use unique sheet. Okay. Define the sheet. We select this button, and we select this curve, okay. Next, here we have the nesting parameters. At this time, in this first exercise, I, I don't talk about all the parameters, just I define here I want to use free rotation of the objects. Okay, now we will talk in detail about that, but just to see the first sample, we select Frido, free, next, and um, execute is calculating page one. Okay, and here we have our nesting. Okay. Any doubt, please uh, ask, to, ask to Xavi. Let me talk a little bit deeper about the parameters that we have to create the nesting. Uh, in the objects, we have four parameters that we can define, okay? We can define how many copies, Chavi is asking about, okay, now I will talk about the sheet. Uh, copies, how many copies we want, okay. Other parameter that we have is priority, okay. We can define different priority in different objects. For example, I want to start doing the nesting with these objects, or later use other objects, okay. The priority is really easy, just we need to define uh, a number, now we will see. Other thing is the rotation, okay, is the freedom that we allow to Rhino Nest to rotate our object, okay. We have different options, we have fixed, without any rotation, we can set 180, 90, minus 90, plus 90, 60, 45, 30, and 15. And also we can define free, okay. And also we can define the object criterion. Okay, uh, the idea is how we want to work with copies of the same objects. Okay, when we define several copies, we can define if we allow to rotate a little bit these objects to find a better, a better position. Okay. Four options, copies, priority, rotation, object criteria. Okay, let me, let me talk about some tips. Okay. Uh, it's better to define the copies in Rhino Ness instead of copy objects in Rhino. Okay, I recommend uh, don't copy the objects 
inside Rhino, I recommend you define the number of copies, okay? Because Rhino NAS uh, knows about it's the same object, okay? About the priority, we can define a number, okay? We can say, okay, this object is priority one, uh, other object is priority two, okay? And the idea is a start uh, placing the objects from one, a later two, a later three, okay? But these numbers is not necessary, uh, uh, must be uh, correlative, okay? We can use one, four, nine, okay? I hope everybody is understanding that because I see Chavi answering a lot. Uh, okay. Other thing is important, help Rhino Nest, okay? Fewer possibilities, better results. Okay, for example, if we use circles, if we want to create a nesting of circles, uh, it's better that we define a fixed rotation, okay, because a circle is a circle. If we rotate it, then the result is the same, okay. For that reason, uh, it's better to help to Rhino nest to do the nesting. Uh, other cases, the rectangles, okay, I think it doesn't make sense that we define more than 90 degrees for create nesting of rectangles, okay? Why fewer possibilities? Because if you reduce the rotation, the, the, the possibilities are less, then uh, it has more time to find a better solution, okay? Just some details about the object criterion, okay? We have a lot of parameters to define the object criterion. We can define a given orientation as basic one, minimize size by, by X, by Epsilon, minimize perimeter, minimize area. Okay, there are a lot of parameters. I think we need a couple of, of seminars to talk just about that. Uh, just a few details. Here we have a, a sample. This is a sample using 90 uh, degrees rotation freedom, okay? Uh, the first option is when we choose uh, given orientation as basic one, okay? Minimize size by uh, X, minimize size by epsilon, and minimize perimeter, okay? As you can see, we define 90 degrees, but in the second, it minimize by size uh, in X or epsilon, is rotating the object, but the rotation between the object is 90 degrees, okay? Any questions, please ask to Chavi and we stop and we talk, okay? Okay, about sheet. We have three ways to define a sheet, okay? Uh, we can define the sheet by size, just type Epsilon, X and Epsilon, okay? Also, we can define uh, a sheet selecting a, a rectangle curve in, in Rhino. And also, we can select from the sheet stock, okay? Uh, let me talk about the sheet stock, the sheet manager. Uh, the idea is uh, uh, in medium, large companies, uh, the people who do the nesting is not the same uh, people who take care about the stocks. Okay. For that reason, uh, Rhino Nest has a standalone application to manage the stock of the sheets that we have in our uh, warehouse. Okay. For that reason, we can say, okay, I want to do a nesting using three sheets of this size, and we want to use the, the next three sheets using other size. Okay. And the idea is uh, it's controlling any type of stock that we have. Okay. Because in some cases, the people do the nesting and later they don't have in the stock the sheet size, okay? Great, nesting parameters. Okay, we have a lot of parameters to, to define our nesting. 
the first is the distance, okay? The distance between the items and the distance between the items to the sheet, okay? Uh, you can define zero millimeters, for example, six millimeters, if you want to cut using a CNC machine, okay? Do you understand the difference between item to item, okay, and item to sheet? Great. The other parameter that we have is the minimum time per sheet. Okay, Rhino Nest try to find uh, the best solution. Okay, obviously in some cases we have infinite possibilities and it's not possible to calculate it in a normal time. For that reason, Rhino Nest is trying to find solutions and try to improve the better solutions. Okay, for that reason, uh, as more time we define, the result will be better. Okay, if we define five seconds, uh, I don't recommend for, for, for uh, uh, a good nesting five seconds. Okay, we will have a nesting, we will have a result, but uh, if we define 60 seconds, the result will be extremely bad. Okay? I see a lot of questions, Xavier. <laughs> well, please let me know if, okay? Great. Uh, now you will see the rotation and the object material. Okay. Uh, here is in gray. The background is gray because uh, we have the option to define the rotation of the object material by object, or we can define for all the objects. Okay. We will see in a real case now. Okay. More parameters, nesting criterion, okay, we, ha we had the, 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 the object criterion, okay, how we relate the object between the copies, but here is the global criterion, okay, uh, define the global nesting criterion for all the objects in the sheet, okay, we will see these criteriums, okay. Uh, don't stress about all these parameters. Later we will see we have an option is automatic nesting and try all the possibilities. Okay, but uh, uh, I like to create this, these webinars to explain all the details. Okay, not just show, talk about how beautiful is Rhino Nest. Okay, okay other, other option that we have now in, in 2.5 is the distance precision. Okay, uh, well, the zero don't exist in, 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 in software, okay? And in Rhino, we know nothing is zero, okay? Uh, for that reason, we can define the precision of the distance, okay? It means if we define, for example, five millimeter distance, I can allow a distance precision, for example, 0 0.1, okay? And Rhino Nest uh, uh, save a lot of time to do the nesting, okay? For that reason, uh, I don't recommend to use low values for that, okay? If you define a distance of zero, okay? But uh, if not, don't use uh, 0 0.001 distance because spend more time, okay? For that reason, I recommend use 0 0.5, okay, uh, 0 0.1, sorry, or 0 0.01, but uh, never go slow than that. If not, uh, spend more time. Okay, I think all depends of, of, of the cost of the sheet and these things, okay? Other thing new in, in, in Rhino Nest 2.5 is the option to define the limit of variance, okay? Uh, by default, I can, I can say to Rhino Nest, okay, when you find 20 good results, please stop, okay? And show me the better, okay? It's correct, do you understand? Tell me, everybody is understanding? I hope so. Okay, <laughs> because it's, yeah, I it's saw 20 conversations are open, but okay. Uh, we will do some, some samples and we will see how it works, okay? Uh, and other option that we have is just rectangular shape, okay? We can do the nesting using the, the bounding box of the objects, okay? the global nesting criterion, okay? This criterion is different than the object criterion, 
Okay, we can say, okay, we want to do the nesting in the minimum mix. We want to do uh, uh, in the lower left point, okay, in the lower right point. Okay, we have a lot of options here. Uh, I recommend uh, that you test it and you will see the results, okay. Uh, also, we have one interesting option is random one seven. Okay, it means that it's testing all these options, okay, to do the nesting, okay. Also, we have options to do the nesting from the center, okay, because in, 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 in some sectors like footwear, okay, uh, the, the lead is, is, is more good, the, the quality is better in the center, okay. For that reason, we can start to do the nesting from the center. We have several options to define how start to create the nesting from the center. And the last two options is uh, try every one to seven, okay, try all of these seven possibilities, and obviously it will show us the better. And we have try every 9, 12 that we try to calculate using these four center options. Okay. Well, and maybe one of the best options of Rhino Nest is don't worry about these things and just click automatic nesting. Okay, if you click automatic nesting, uh, the nesting calculates all the possibilities and show us the, the, the best. Okay. Uh, let me talk about a trick. Increase the time. Okay, don't click automatic nesting and define 10 seconds. Okay, because the result, uh, they don't have, uh, Rhino Nest don't, doesn't have time to, to find the best, the best solution. For that reason, define 20, 30, 60, okay? Okay? Then, let me, let me, before to talk about the groups, let me show you the options. Now I select the objects to do the nesting. And after to select, we have this option, okay? This beautiful icon uh, shows the graphic selector. Okay? The, the idea is we can apply the quantity, the priority, the orientation, and the object criteria, okay? For example, I can select all of them, okay, and say I want a quantity of 10, okay? Apply, and now we will see here the number is 10 copies, but I want to start using this shape. For that reason, I will apply a priority of one to this object, Okay. The second object that I want, I want will be this object, the second, the priority is second, that. Okay. And the third priority, this, this, and this. We select priority three and orientation three. Okay. Then now start create the nesting using this later this, a little the three other objects, okay? Also, we can select all, we can select by layers, okay? If we have this object by layers, we can select all of them by layers. Then now, I click OK. Okay, other, other thing is, uh, remember, when you select one object, after to select and change the value, click to apply, okay? It's important, okay? Because if not, uh, the changes are not applicable. Okay, then next, unique sheet, we click this one. Now the freedom show barriers because we have different freedom applicate, but we can override if we want to click here, we can change it. Okay, let me disable the little original and next. Okay, then I think you need a training of, of Rhino Nest. <laughs> as bigger is the value, uh, uh, 
is first a position, okay? For that reason, the first objects are these objects, priority three, these objects are priority two, and these objects are priority three, uh, priority one, okay? Uh, well, the priority, in some cases, do that the quality is not as good as we like, okay? And also we define fixed uh, rotation in these objects for that reason is, is not the best. But, uh, well, here is the result. Let me show you other interesting thing of, of Rhino Nest 2.5 is before in, in, in 2.1, when we finish to do a nesting, we need to select again and apply priorities on these things. Now, if we don't like this nesting, we can copy the object or, or copy the sheet, okay? Go back, select the sheet again, and now say, okay, I want free rotation. Okay, execute. And now it's calculating the nesting with other parameters. If I don't like, the same thing. Okay, we copy this object, this, this sheet, sorry. Okay, uh, we select again the sheet because it's in another position. And now I will see minimize, okay, and I will give more time. Okay, now the nesting is better. Okay, good. Charlie, don't stop to to bribe. <laughs> okay, then. Let me, let me talk about groups, okay, because uh, we received some, some questions and also in RhinoNest.com uh, there are some discussions about that, okay, uh, how RhinoNest works, okay, uh, by default, okay, looks this RhinoNest text, uh, by default, each closed curve is an object, okay, then if I create this RhinoNest in course, we select and we do the nesting, and each part is an object, okay, in the R, we have here the R, and the internal part of the R is here, okay. For that reason, we can group the course, okay, and we can group closet and open course, and we can group all that we want, okay, we can group closet course, solids, okay, all that we want, okay, uh, and then analyze the group, and get the biggest closet curve to do the nesting. Okay? The biggest closet curve. Okay? Let me let me let me show you. Okay, in a Arial, line a nest, then, okay, we create the sheet here, we select the objects, as you can see, we have one copy of these objects, the R, the H, okay, Okay. This is the result, but we can group this curve, for example, and then now we have a group, and if we do the nesting, now it's just an object. Okay. Obviously, when you have a lot of course, it's a little bit annoying to select one per one and create the groups. Let me undo, okay? For that reason, we add a functionality, is group containment, and this command do the groups for you. Okay, we select all of them, and automatically create the groups. 
¿Ok? Ok. Uh, you, uh, group containment. ¿Ok? Analyze automatically and create the groups. ¿Ok? Let me, let me tell you about one thing. Uh, in Rhino, because somebody asked Xavi, uh, because here we have the, the command unify groups. ¿Ok? Then in Rhino, if we create a curve, and a second curve, ¿Ok? If we group, this is a group, If we create other curve and we create a group, in these three curves we have two groups, okay? We have two levels of groups, okay? And the top group is this curve, okay? Let me do that. This curve and the rest, okay? Then in Rhino we can add different levels of groups, okay? Uh, if you use Rhino, uh, Rhino script or Python or, or, or Grasshopper, I think you, you will understand that. But if not, just believe me. Okay, Rhino has different levels of groups. Uh, for that reason, okay, uh, we have a tool that unify all these groups in one. Okay, we select this one and unify groups. Okay, and now these three curves are in just in one group. Okay, then if we ungroup, okay, nobody is asking, I think it's clear, okay, if not, please uh, let me, let me know, okay, uh, great, But we have more tools to, to help you to create a nesting, okay? Uh, we have tools to identify objects, to slice, to remap, okay? Now we will see. Okay, we have a tool for a slice, okay? Uh, the idea of this tool is, imagine that you want to create this head of two meters in a, in a CNC router or in a light laser cutter, uh, obviously this case you cannot do it for that reason uh, you can slice the objects okay let me show you a project it is you can slice a 3d object this 3d object can be a solid a surface a mesh okay this is a real project I think we will organize just a webinar to talk about the Slice 3D because in 2.5 there are a lot of new functionalities calculating in different threads to, to, to work faster because we received some emails about I have problems to create the slices with a mesh of, of 200 megabytes STL of 200 megabytes. For that reason in 2.5 we use uh, multi-threading to do that. Okay. I think this is a very beautiful project. Okay, the Guardian. Other application of the slice. Okay, you model this in 3D or later you define, okay, I want use sheets of 10 millimeters. Okay. Here the, the nesting. We have other tool is remap. Remap allow to uh, remap 3D objects in flat. Okay, uh, it's not a flattened algorithm. The idea is uh, try to find in a solid the, the biggest flattened surface to align to the C plane. Okay, the idea is we can select 
the solids remap in flat, okay? A little do the nesting. Let me let me show you how we can do it. Okay, we want to cut this furniture. Uh, okay, we want to do the nesting in this sheet. Then we have a tool, Remap. The idea is we can select all the objects and automatically align to the C-plane. Okay, in this case, uh, we have a small problem because maybe later we don't know what is uh, each object. For that reason, let me undo. And we will use a list. Okay, we will talk later about the list options. But basically, the idea is uh, we can select all the objects and automatically identify all the objects using dots, text or simple stroke forms. Okay. Then now remap, we select the objects. We can delete originals now. Okay. Okay. And the idea is, in, in Rhino Nest 2.5, we will have the option to do the nesting automatically from the solids, okay? Uh, but we have a tool to, to create the base curve, okay? The idea of this tool is we can select all the objects, okay, and automatically create a curve to do the nesting and group it to the object. Okay, let me let me show you. Okay, we have this curve and this group it. Okay. Then now we do the nesting. We want to do the nesting of these objects. 115. Unique sheet. This size. Okay, uh, the distance maybe we can choose six millimeters because I will use uh, a CNC machine. Then I define I will use a tool of six millimeters. Then I define six millimeters distance either to sheet. I will define three because I don't know if my sheet is is perfectly a rectangle. For that reason, three millimeters is enough. Okay, freedom. In this case, I think the best option is 90 degrees, okay, because it's all of them or most of them are rectangles. Then, execute. Okay, when sheet is calculated, now it's calculating the page two. Still 103 objects to nest. Okay, page three, still 89 objects to nest. If I don't like, now I can stop and come back and change the parameters and start the nesting again. Page four.
ok ok here the nesting I'm sure for example in this case you see that we have very few objects in the last sheet I'm sure if we define more time Rhino nest will save more space here ok but just for 20 seconds is, is the best option ok ok when we finish we have a report here ok in the sheet 1 we have 12 objects ok 96% of area used 14, 44, okay. We can copy or export this report, okay, and finish. Okay. Always we have the same problem, always more time than 45 minutes, but uh, we will try to go a little bit faster. List objects, okay. Uh, I think it's really really important uh, to identify the objects to the domestic okay if not later we don't can we cannot identify the objects <coughs> for that reason we have several ways to do that and we can define a dot okay a rhino dot we can define uh, a dimension text okay and also we can define a single stroke font okay uh, if you want to print this object okay you can use a dot or a dimension text but if you want to use a laser cutter or a CNC machine you must to use the single stroke okay I think it's really important because if you export to HPGL this this I think that the dot I'm sure is not there the the the, the dimension text maybe but some machines don't doesn't detect that but all the machines detect the simple stroke uh, phone because it's exactly a cool. Okay. Dynamic tabs. Okay, this tool is for create tabs. Okay, and why we need that? Okay, imagine that you want to cut uh, these objects. Okay, and uh, some machine has vacuum. Okay, then the sheet is completely fixed okay but uh, we can define some areas in other colors okay then in the machine we can define different uh, uh, Z level okay for example I can say I want to cut all the black cores but the red just the one uh, a little bit okay then when we remove the sheet okay all, all the objects uh, still remain in, 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 in the sheet okay do you understand that okay if not please ask to Xavi and okay the idea is we can dynamically define okay I don't want to cut in this point in this point in this point or later we can remove these parts or define in the machine different pressures okay also we can define these tabs uh, by curve intersection okay there's other way to do the same and the conic is an option allows to uh, to connect all the curves okay as you can see here okay we connect all the curves okay and what is the objective of that uh, basically save time of machine okay because the tool is down start in one point and cut all the objects in one time okay don't need to go up and jump to other part go in okay and clear is to save time later you can break that okay import multiple files we can import one folder with a lot of files okay if you use other extra software to to design anything you can import in Rhino okay and do the nesting in Rhino you can import and export in HPGL file 
okay, each PGL file is standard uh, file format for cutters machines. Okay, then we can import and we can export. And, okay, and we have a tool really easy that you, we can export all the HPGL files in one click. Okay, and create one HPGL file for each sheet. Okay. This is new tool for uh, 2.5 is exporting to SVG files. Okay, a lot of engraving machines and, and laser cutters use this format. Okay, for that reason, now we can export directly. Okay. We have a raster to vector. We can get any sketch or any draw and raster inside Rhino Nest. Let me let me show you a sample. Okay, here in Rhino Nest tools we have raster to vector. We select an image. The desktop. I have the Mickey. Well, you can use logos, you can use what you want. Then here you have some functionalities to clear the image, okay, uh, to modify the image. But basically, the idea is we can use a style, for example, old lines, review. Okay, and now we have this course in Rhino. The best thing is this course, you can join it. And as you can see, the quality is really good. It's not a polyline. Okay, good. Then later we can get the Mickey and use the Mickey to do a nesting. We want 10 copies of Mickey. Oops, we have several objects. Then let me clean the selection. We will group. We select again 10 quality, uh, 10, 10 copies. Okay. Unix sheet, this size. I think it is okay just to show you. Oops. Quantity 10. Well, I'm working with a beta. I think it's creating some strange thing here. Okay. For that reason, it's, it's not working correctly. Okay, fix it. Yeah, we'll select free. One interesting thing is uh, now we're spending more time to create the nesting because the external proof of the Mickey has a lot of points, okay? As more points we have, the Rhino Nest needs to calculate more. The density, okay, uh, Xavi asked me, because uh, the density of the uh, polyline that used to do the nesting is uh, using, well, if you are using curves, uh, it converts to polyline. If you use polyline, use directly the polyline. Okay, then if you want to control all, uh, I recommend you convert to polyline the curve, okay, and, and group it. Then if I don't have to take this is a polyline, 
uh, don't try to do nothing, just get the polyline and do the nesting. Uh, if not, try to convert to polyline using the, 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 the document absolute tolerance. Okay, by default, I think it's 0 0.001 when we are working in millimeters. Okay. Well, now it's spending some time. Raster to vector. Also, we have all these tools in Grasshopper. Okay, uh, if you want, you have all these tools: the nesting, okay, the the IDs, the sheet definition, the criterion, the remap. Okay, all these tools are in in, in Grasshopper. Uh, you can download from from rhinoness.com also the the the, the rhinoness for grasshopper. Uh, if you have rhinoness, rhinoness for grasshopper is free. Okay, you can download and, and, and use it. Uh, we are working in a new version too when we release 2.5 because from server release nine uh, uh, and grasshopper I think 8.0010 something is changed and, and it's giving some license problem. For that reason. Uh, uh, if you are using a uh, server release 8, you can download now. If not, you can try if you want. If not, wait a couple of days. Okay? But all the tools that you want, okay? Let me, let me ask you a question, okay? Uh, because I would like to know... How many people use Grasshopper? Okay, the question, do you use Grasshopper? Okay, that's sixty percent. Okay, click yes, not, and click the button submit. Okay, it's not so bad. Okay, we close. Okay, 61% use the hopper chai. I thought that it will be less than 61%. Okay, the other 39%, let me recommend you to take a look to Grasshopper, okay? Okay, uh, also, uh, we had an idea some months ago uh, to change the way the kernel of Rhino Nest and, and we create our own SDK to create Rhino Nest. Then Rhino Nest now is using uh, the Rhino Nest SDK. Okay, for that reason uh, we do that because we want to uh, share to everybody to use our functionalities to create the nesting or remap of these things uh, will be open for all the Rhino Nest users to, to use uh, C++ or Net, Python, Visual Basic Script, okay, all that you want to create your own functionalities, okay. Uh, this SDK will be available in 2.5 and, and the idea is release all the versions that we need, okay, if some of you need some more functionalities. I think we have a lot, but if you think we need more, just let us know and we will add more, okay? Then now we don't have limits, okay? We can use Rhino Nest in Rhino, we can use Rhino Nest in Grasshopper, we can use Rhino Nest in Python, okay? Uh, and, and to finish, uh, let me show you some user projects.
This is really a beautiful project. Some projects of Sigradi. Uh, we have a question. Uh, is possible to write the script to import files to Nest? Okay, and define the location. Yeah, you can define all that you want. Okay, it's the same SDK that we use in Rhino Nest. Then you can define all the parameters, and you have access to all the parameters: time, object criterion, uh, nesting criterion, uh, sheet sizes, all that you want. Okay. Well, now let me talk just 10 seconds about prices because in, in RhinoNest we don't have any price in the website. All the prices are in, in tdmsolution.com, okay, because RhinoNest is, is a place to, uh, to discuss technically, okay. Uh, but here are the, the, the prices. The RhinoNest commercial is $6.95. Uh, RhinoNest, more Rhino, $14.95. We have educational versions. Uh, is 295, okay, and the break for 2.5 is free for all the Rhino Nest uh, 2.0 and 2.1, okay. Uh, <clears throat> you can find more information in TDM Solutions slash store, okay, tdmsolutions.com, and then in the top in the menu you will see a store, okay. When Rhino Nest 2.5, uh, we will release a strong beta. This week, okay. This week you can download a, a, a strong beta and use it, okay. And some questions. Tell you, I see that you don't stop to to bribe, but uh, they are annoying. annoying. They are annoying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then uh, let me let me talk, Chavi, uh, about Rhinoness.com. Okay, uh, I think most of you know about rhinoness.com. The, the idea is a website of rhinoness. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we use link platform, okay. Uh, the idea is here you can take care about all the new things about uh, Rhino Nest. Okay, you have uh, some photos of other projects using Rhino Nest. You have videos. Okay, for example, I want to know who use Rhino Nest with Ingress Hopper. Here they have a wonderful video to see how it works. Okay, uh, the good thing is you can ask. Okay, you have the forum. Okay then you can write here any question okay and I think it's a good a good 
website to be uh, to have all the information about Rhinoness. Uh, it's very simple. You need just to sign up. Okay, it's an email and a password, and that's it. Okay, and I think it's really really interesting. Rhinoness.com. Then that's all about the webinar of Rhino Nest. Uh, I think we see a lot of things. I'm sure we need to organize other webinars of Rhino Nest just to talk uh, about the slice 3D or to talk about uh, Rhino Nest for Grasshopper or how to use in Rhino Script or these things. Okay, for that reason, uh, we want to care about you. If you have anything, please write us. Uh, say okay I want a webinar about that okay I'm sure if you want uh, a lot of people will want to okay then uh, I don't know Chavi if we are having more questions because I see you don't stop to to write okay the slice 3d webinar great Let's hope a webinar great Okay, then uh, we will see more minutes here, okay, answering all your questions, okay, and, uh, and if you don't have any question now, tomorrow we will be here, okay, and <laughs> well, all the days we will be here, then you can call us, you can write us, you can go to rhinoness.com, okay, uh, please contact us, okay. Uh, okay, then thank you for your time, and... Uh, we will see in the next webinar. Bye-bye.